Hey guys, what's going on? James here. I'm joined yet again by Evan Wanish, the co-host of the Cannon Fire podcast. They just did an episode with Rock Riley. Go check that out if you guys haven't already. And Evan, you guys inspired me uh, to make a couple of videos here on the channel. One, which is either, it's probably going to be uploaded after this one. We're talking about the Randy Gregory situation. But this one today, we're talking about the Tristan Wirth situation because... There's been a lot of moving pieces regarding negotiations and whatnot. Evan, can you fill me and the viewers in on what the heck is going on at this point? Yeah, so I mean, the, the timeline of events is, is this pretty much. So obviously all along the entire offseason, uh, there's been chatter, right, of Tristan Wirth's pending you know, extension with the Buccaneers. And uh, it would actually benefit the Buccaneers in uh, a decent bit because it, depending on how they structured it, they would actually be able to free up cap space for this year. But, I mean, I know right now it probably doesn't matter as much. But uh, if they wanted to, they could. So all off season, you know, that, that has been the talk, right? And it's been a thing of like, oh, yeah, probably gonna, it'll get done, it'll get done, it'll get done. Haven't really heard much. Uh, Tristan Wirfs actually, you know, still went to training camp, still was out there practicing. He wasn't holding out. He wasn't holding in. Like, he was out there practicing risking injury you know and, and that's millions and millions and millions of dollars right there he is risking uh, by going out there he didn't have to do it uh but he, he was out there uh and then sunday night rick shroud of the Tampa Bay times comes out and he says and he reports from his sources that uh, the buccaneers are closing in on a deal with Tristan Wirfs. Now, it didn't say the deal was done. You know, it didn't say anything about, you know, the deal being agreed upon or finalized or anything like that, but said that, you know, it was trending in that direction, that the, the deal was getting close, basically, right? And, and that it was going to be a massive deal and stuff like that. Shortly after that, Jordan Schultz, who's an NFL reporter, pretty reputable guy, has a lot of sources around the league. He comes out and says that sport, uh, source that he spoke to uh, says that basically the Buccaneers and Tristan Wirfs are very far apart in the contract negotiations. And Schultz mentioned that the source said to him that they are, quote, miles apart uh, for the negotiations. So very uh, contradicting reports there from Schultz and Stroud. Uh, Pewter Report then chimed in and, and said that they've also heard that while it's not done, it's heading in that direction. So it does seem like things are heading in a more positive direction than Schultz's tweet. I'm not saying that Schultz got, you know, uh, is making this up. He, he clearly heard that from somewhere. Um, a, a source had told him that, but uh, I do think it, it made uh, Bucks fans panic a little bit when they, when they read that, you know, that the Buccaneers are miles apart with Tristan Wirfs. Uh, but I, I think we have to, to realize that at the end of the day, and, and, and Rock Riley even mentioned this as, as well uh, on the podcast, and uh, this is going to be the biggest contract in, in Buccaneers history. Uh, I actually mentioned that too. Uh, and, and there's a, a lot that goes into it, right? There's going to be the biggest contract that they've ever handed out. Tristan Wirfs will be a Buccaneer. It, it, just, it will happen. He'll be a Buccaneer beyond 2024. He's going to be a Buccaneer for many, many years. I would be absolutely floored if he even sniffed the open market, if he gets to at the, the last day of the season, he's not signed, I would be absolutely stunned, just stunned. So I, I, I fully expect Tristan Wirfs to be a Buccaneer. The reports, yeah, they're they're contradicting themselves. They're conflicting reports, but it's sort of lining up to where Tristan Wirfs is getting ready to sign a, a mega, mega extension with the Buccaneers. Now I was just doing some research while we were while um, you were talking there about those points, and I, I did have a couple of questions. So number one, um, I'm doing some some looks here on offensive line, right in the NFL. The most guaranteed money on an offensive line contract, total guaranteed, is Penny Sewell with eighty five million dollars guaranteed. Now the highest contract average for an offensive lineman is again Penny Sewell at twenty eight million dollars per year on average. Okay, um, the highest left tackle is currently Christian Darrisaw at twenty six million. Penny Sewell and, plays and, and right D tackle. Darris Darrisaw just got paid too. That is uh, the one of the most recent comps there for that. So 
whenever and and I did hear you say that this is going to be the biggest contract in Buccaneers history. Um, so like what dive into that a little bit deeper. Do you mean just the length of the deal, the total money of the deal, the guarant total guaranteed money in the deal, or just all of the above? Yeah, I I mean I I think you could see it being maybe not years, right? I can see it being a five year deal, probably at most at very most six. But uh, as far as the total money, you know, the guaranteed money stuff like that, I, I think you're gonna see the biggest number that the Buccaneers have ever handed out. I actually believe right now i think baker mayfield might hold the that, that title that's what um, i was gonna say was baker's yeah. making i think 30 something million per year right yeah i, I think baker's uh three year like a hundred million dollar contract basically um i think that pretty much is is uh right now the the highest contract they've ever handed out yeah. um so tristan Wirfs is, is gonna smash that is is basically what i'm trying to say um they paid Anton Winfield Jr. They're going to pay Tristan Wirfs, so mm -hmm. it, it is it is going to happen. Um, the exact numbers, I have no idea, but it, it, it's going to happen. I mean, you got the general manager, um, you know, saying <laughs> the general manager of the team, Jason Light, right, is saying that uh, Wirfs should be the highest paid offensive lineman, right? Uh, Ari Mirov of Thirty Third Team, he's an NFL reporter. This is his projection. Um, he, he projects that uh, the the extension would be a five year, one hundred twenty seven point five million dollar contract with seventy two million guaranteed. Um, that would obviously make Tristan Wirfs the um, highest paid offensive tackle in NFL history. So I, I just I, I do I do think it's coming, and uh, I would be like I said, just absolutely absolutely uh, stunned, even if. Even if you were to sign, let's say he signs in March, I'd be stunned if he signed in March because I would have been stunned that it took this long. It is it is going to happen, and it is going to happen sooner rather than later. Real quick as well, I just want to make a note. Um, so you did talk about like the overall value being projected to be like, what was it, $125 million? Uh, one hundred. Uh, what was projected by Ari there was $127.5 million over five years. So right now, Baker Mayfield does have the highest contract currently with the Bucks at a total value of one hundred million dollars. Right below yes. him at eighty four point one million is Antoine Winfield Jr. Just below them at seventy one million, you have Vita Vea. After that, you've Chris, you've got Chris Godwin at sixty million, Jamel Dean at fifty two million, and Mike Evans at forty one. Um, but that was only on a two year deal. Um, I and I agree. I think that Worf's. <sighs> Uh, it's it's always a tough dis a tough discussion. You're like, who's the best player on the box? Who's the most important player on the box? Like, you could argue both are Tristan Wirf seven. Is that yep. is that a fair thing to say? You you could. I mean, I mean, especially when when you have an elite offensive tackle. More specifically, when it is an elite left tackle, mm -hmm. it just it makes life so much easier for everybody on offense. It, it really does in the run game, the pass game, especially because most of the time, you know, your quarterbacks that's going to be your quarterback's blind side, right? Your quarterback's going to be right handed, so uh, protect that blind side. And, and worse was a spectacular right tackle, and then he moves over to the left, and he's just as good, if not better. Yeah. It is uh, it is invaluable, I, I really think, how good he has been to the Buccaneers. I remember you said something on the podcast episode with um, Rock Riley, which you guys haven't seen that yet. Definitely go check it out there on uh, Evan's show, the Cannon Fire podcast. Um, you said that he is almost impossible to replace. I'm going to take it a step further. He is impossible to replace. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not wrong. I'm, I'm not going to push back on that. I, I mean... Look, and as much as everybody loves the guys, I think that you could find a replacement for a Baker Mayfield. I think that you could find maybe not the best replacement in the world, but like a fine replacement for maybe like an Antoine Winfield Jr. or a Vita Vea, maybe even like a Chris Godwin or, or you know, I don't know, maybe a Mike Evans one day, considering how much wide receiver talent's in the world. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, yeah. Brother, you cannot replace one of the top tackles in the league. I, you also said something that was so such a um, just a great point to make in the episode as well. You said um, good left tackles, good tackles, period, don't even hit the market. Dude, there was a reason that Donovan Smith got the bag whenever he yeah, was with the Bucks. He can, every single time, he, he never hit the open market. And he, he never did. And he's not even half, well, I don't yeah, even know. you could say it. I don't even, say I, it. He's not even half the player that Tristan Warps is. You know, like... 
is in and he never hit the market so it's like it's just incredible man look for anybody that's worried don't be if there was yeah. one player on this entire roster besides like maybe mike evans or maybe like i don't know gosh. i mean i mean hey to, to me it was fair to think that mike evans could maybe play elsewhere last year right and, like and, th and, there was there was look there's a there was a higher chance that anton winfield was playing elsewhere than tristan Wirfs was it just wasn't gonna happen evan if you told jason light he could keep one player on this entire 90 man roster of the tampa bay buccaneers and everybody else had to go i think he would probably pick tristan Wirfs. Probably. I mean, he probably choose the 25, 26-year-old left tackle. Who's in his prime. It is yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. And just proved he could play both tackle positions. I mean, mm -hmm. it's insane. It's insane. So, folks, don't worry. A long-term deal is going to get done. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Um, and whenever you're, and, and another thing to note as well, whenever Jason Light does come out with these quotes, a deal gets done like within like a week later, by the way. Um, happened with Mike Evans, happened with Baker Mayfield, happened with Antoine Winfield Jr. So, like, just keep an eye on this going forward. I imagine we'll be getting some very positive news here very soon. But, Evan, before we get, go ahead and end off, do you have any final words? No, not really. Like like you said, I, I would expect a, a worse news uh, sooner rather than later, and uh, it'll be a, a pretty fun day here. Right on. Well, guys, go check out Evan's show, the Cannon Fire podcast, where he did an episode recently with Rock Riley. Uh, Rhett Matthew, the uh, um, co-host over there on there, was there as well. It's a great show, guys. Go give it a listen. Rock Riley's obviously been doing this a long time. Um, hey, also, go give me a follow on Twitter. Evan's been helping me out a lot in terms of posting videos up on there um, while I'm at training camp with not the best internet basically and and uh, just making sure to help you guys keep up to date as possible so uh evan we greatly appreciate your work there on the social medias as well and on instagram go give me a follow on instagram i think we just passed 900 followers on instagram we're about to pass 1600 followers on twitter so it's it's fun times right now um evan's been crushing it posting all the clips i've been taking at the training camp practices and it's been a lot of fun. So, guys, let us know your thoughts and opinions about this down in the comment section below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. As always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.